Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on May 29th um, to talk about tomorrow's May 30th League of Legends DFS slate. It's another uh, two-game slate um, in the LPL in China. Um, we had a you know profitable slate uh, last night or this morning, however you look at it, um, even though we had some... <laughs> Incorrect predictions. Um, I went with my cash lineup was the anyone's legend long stack and thunder talk um, short stack, just given the kill upside of that AL UP matchup that I uh, modeled out and predicted. Um, it actually worked out um, in favor of my bankroll because thunder talk got zipped out two to zero um, by FPX, the biggest underdog on the slate. But as you guys can tell, like early in the split with new rosters, um, you know, anything can happen. Like the odds, like I think I said this yesterday on the video as well. Um, the odds don't really matter at this point. Like you want to look at what rosters each team has. But then at the same time, some of these roster changes are going to take time, um, take time to mesh together and work together. Team chemistry is not quite there. Um, all these teams are kind of just like scrimmaging and against other teams and internally and all that, but it's not the same, you know, as if you are competing live against other professional teams, right? So, um, so that's I mean that's a long way of saying like you know you can really play any teams <laughs> on the slate. Um, I think you are if you are a GPP person, you feel free to you know. Just play the biggest underdog, long stack, short stack, whatever you want to do. Um, but you know, but but still, like at the end of the day, you want to see, you want to roster the players that you know um, have a high kill share and kill participation percentage on that sort of team. And I I talk about that you know in my videos here and there. But you know, I think you know you can play any any team stack, but you still want to see what players will score well on that team, right? So I think that's probably the most important thing you want to do at this point in the summer split. If you like my videos, um, please, please hit the like button below and subscribe um, to our channel. As you can tell, this is the True DFS Discord um, that I chat with some members in this channel. Um, we chat league all the time and other esports if you want to. Um, but you know, this is the channel to be at, to be in, um, feel free to join true DFS at, uh, truedfs.com. So, all right. So let's look at tomorrow's roster. Um, let me pull this up my notes. So it's an interesting slate. I think, um, EDG is a huge favorite, obviously going up against nip ninjas in pajamas. EDG performed really well. Um, I don't think I have it up, but they finished second or third, I believe, in the last split um, in the regular season. They were really good. And JJ is really good. Probably one of the best junglers in the in, in the LPL in China. Um, I think he's going to be he's going to actually get the nod to represent the, 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 the country of China in Asian Games tournament that I talked about where all the countries, including Korea and China, um, the best players from those countries, you know, um, get together and form a team for the country and kind of like the Olympics, you know, play against. So, and people, people were talking about that. JJ is probably going to get the nod and he's because he is perceived as the best jungler in the, in the LPL so far. Now he's going up against shadow. Um, shadow has been up and down as you guys can remember from last blade. If you do, uh, you know, he used to play for LGD before and then he kind of took a little break and then he came Two and then just in pajamas later in the split, last split, and he kind of you know I think uh, injected some energy and some new blood into this team uh, late in the season, even though they were kind of up and down as well still later in the season. Um, but now he's continuing to be the starter for ninjas in pajamas, so we'll see how that pans out. But you know I like his aggressive play uh, playing style of Shadow. And going up against JJ, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup there. But everywhere else, I mean, I'll have to favor Fofo over Angel. Angel is the new mid laner for Ninjas and Pajamas this split. Um, as you guys kind of probably saw here, 
Angel is de- uh, making the debut with uh and and ninjas in pajamas. Um, he struggled a bit. Um, I think he also had some management issues issues with the management in his uh, previous team, on his previous team. So like they severed you know ties um there. I think mutually, but now he's the mid uh, starting mid laner for ninjas in pajamas. So I think that's gonna be helpful for, for helpful helpful for him. But I don't know what kind of like form that he is in. I just don't think he is quite at the level, elite level that uh, most laners, most mid laners are at um, in the LPL. I think he's kind of like a mid tier uh, mid laner. So um, so yeah. That's kind of where I stand on the on those uh mid laners there in this matchup. And then in the bottom lane is what is interesting. I think Leave and Mako actually showed up real well uh well uh in the last split, going up against Fotik and Juo, who really I mean, I think they're up and coming. Like I think they're okay. Like they're not I don't think they're gonna roll over by any means um against Leave and Mako. Mako is probably one of the best uh, supports in the in uh in China as well. Um, so I think that's going to be an interesting matchup. I, I, don't, I really don't have a lean right now, but I'll look at the metrics and see what happens. And in the top lane, I think Invincible actually has been pretty good in the last split, in my opinion. Now let, I'll, I'll look at the metrics, but to, to see if that supports that. And Ala used to be one of the best, best mid laners, but man, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right. So let's look at... Let's look at LGD's team, like roster changes that I just talked about. So I want to see earlier in the split like this, um, if they made any significant changes or the lack thereof to see if their chances are um, improving this split compared to last year's. Chilitsi and Xiaoshu, the top laners are gone. Okay. But I think Chilitsi left early. Yeah, I mean, he left before the spring split. And then Xiao Xu left. So they have Fearness by himself now, okay. And Meteor. This is LGD, right? Okay, I need to look at, sorry. I need to look at um, Ninjas and Pajamas here. Let's look at that first. Shadow joined, yeah, like March. Okay, so let's see. Former. So Rich left. He was so, so bad. Oh, he plays for Dignitas now in the LCS. Wow. Good luck. Um, uh, Dream was actually pretty good. Oh, wow. He's a free agent still. When did Dream leave? Oh, wow. May 29th. As part of Angel coming on. Interesting. Did Pout ever start for them? I don't think they did. Did they? I'll have to see. Sorry, guys. It's been a while since I looked at the Ninjas and Pajamas roster. So let's look at that real quick. Pout did start 17 games. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, Dream played more, though, right? Yeah. So, oh, man. So that's kind of going to be interesting. I think Angel is not that much better than Pout. But he's getting the nod to start, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say NIP. Um, let's look, let's go through the order. So jungler, we have XLB who's backing up, Xiaolia Bao, jungle, and mid potential sub risks with XLB and Pout. XLB, um, played a lot of games, right? Yeah. Shadow started starting after later in the split. This is a tricky team, okay. They're trying to figure out who to start. Um, because I think both guys, all like both pairs really have um similar skill levels. Like not one's sig- significantly better than the other, right? So Fotik and Joe though, man. 
no competition there in those roles. All right, let's look at their EGPMs, okay? I want to look at how Shadow and XL Shell Outbound did. I don't think it was that great. Shadow's down here. X Shell Outbound's down here. Okay, so they were pretty bad last split overall. And this is a sizable sample, right? Um, Ning was the only one that was worse. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna make um both shadow and XLB were bad in EGPM for amongst junglers. Oh man. And then they're going up against JJ, who had a decent okay, and that's not too bad. Not too good either. Two or four. Wow. Hmm. I wanna see the teams, how the junglers did it overall as a team. Control percentage. Yeah, EDG was up here. So I think that also is partially due to the Mako actually uh, playing really well as a support, uh, kind of accompanying the, the jungler. But man, that is really high compared to, let's see, then some pajamas, 47.7%. Okay. That confirms kind of like the Vegas odds. And then I want to look at... how um, well the AD carry did. Votic. Yeah, Votic wasn't bad. I mean, really, like, you see it in the middle right here compared to Edward Gaming. Leave was really good, too. So, man, that is going to be a challenge for NIP. It's quite... A difference there, I think. Let's look at EDG and IP here. Mako. Juo. Okay. Yeah, about similar. All right. Let's look at the mid lane. And this is going to be different because, let's see, Angel versus Fofo. Let's see how well Fofo did. Fofo was not great. Yeah, I remember this. He was the weakest link. Um and he was even worse than angel technically even though angel played for a different team um who was nip's pout pout and dream was it oh man they're back down here fofo angel rng yeah i think this is more of a wash Although Pout, oh man, Dream. I think it's going to be a wash. I don't think neither is that great. Bofo or Angel. We'll see. I think, yeah, I forgot how bad Fofo was last split. And I think that's a little bit concerning. So I think if you were to um, long stack NIP for whatever reason in the tournament, I wouldn't mind captaining Angel. Just based on that matchup, right? I think Angel would have some superiority there, um, in, in case like things go right for you know in his way. Um, I think Angel, there's a good scenario where Angel could outscore Fotek on his team, um, and then obviously having that lane advantage over Fofo could become handy there. All right, let's look at last thing, the top laners. Um, we have Invincible versus Ala. Alo was, wow, up there. Okay. Wow. It was that good? Over Ben? Wow. That is amazing. Okay. That, I had no idea, actually. I didn't know he had that good of a season or split. All right, and then, so <laughs> I'm lost. Allah versus Invincible. Invincible is up here too. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's going to be a very interesting matchup. Allah has been really good. So I think he, even his kill share is twenty over 20%, which is really good. 
you know, participation is kind of low, but for top laners, it's kind of common. Um, Shanji's was extraordinary. Yeah. But Killshare, I mean, he's up there, right? 20%. Anything over 20% is good, um, especially for top laners. Um, well, it was really good last split. <laughs> That's good to know, I think. Um, so yeah, overall, like EDG really should win. Advantage here, advantage there. Eh, neutral there, advantage in the bottom lane. So yeah, advantages in favor of EDG. Every lane except for mid lane, maybe depending on... Angel's form and Fofo's improvements this off season. Um, but yeah, let's look at EDG's roster changes. I don't think there was that much um this off season. Not off season between the splits. Um, we already know Jinja left before, but we do have. Sub jungler monkey, but that was he joined like a long time. I don't think he's gonna start or sub that sub in Fisher. Who's that? The hell is Fisher? I don't think any of them played. I think EDG actually had all five players starting in all games. I want to look at that. Maybe it's true. Yeah, 39. <laughs> they didn't have a single change, um, which is really good. I mean, consistency obviously matters too. All, ret all returning starters from last split, JJ and Mako dominated the jungle control percentage for EDG. Consistency is key for early... And the split after a long off season between the splits. And as mentioned, like I said, I told you about the advantages that EDG has. Um, so my match prediction is EDG wins, EDG wins two to zero. But this is early in the split, so anything can happen. So feel free to play NIP and GPP and feel free to Captain Angel based on the lane matchup. Really the only advantage NIP has based on Matrix. So that's that's what I have. I think it's hard to get away from EDG on a two game slate like this if you are playing one or two lineups. Um uh so that's probably what, what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do that EDG um having have EDG in a lot of my lineups. So all right, before we delve into the LGD versus IG matchup, which is gonna be closer in theory, um, I want you to hit the please please hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel. That would mean a lot. Um thank you. All right, LGD versus IG. This is a closer matchup, like I said. Um, so let's close these windows. LGD had some interesting changes, in my opinion. Probably the most interesting one uh, um, with Envy coming in at 80 carry. So I think I was a, not a big fan, but I was a fan of Envy in Korea when he played in the LCK. I think he played for the Sandbox, I think, right? Let me look at that. Yeah, sandbox. Um, before Prince came out <laughs> and just dominated that scene, um, or after I guess Prince left, um, and V started and all that. So, uh, and he was okay. Like he was. I want to see how he fared against other Korean eighty carry players. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting thing to look at. Um. You see Sandbox here. Uh, he played 47 games, all of them.
It was kind of in the middle. Amy and Gumayushi Pays, as you guys all know, they're really good. Um, they're the top three, probably eight of carries that were in the last split. Deft was okay. Viper was okay. Um, I think their team suffered more than anything. But Envy was kind of in the middle there. Um, let's look at how much impact he had on his team. 29, about 30% kill share. 65% kill participation. So not too bad. Kill particip participation is low. Um, for, an, for an 80 carry, that's interesting. I think 109, 135, goal difference, XP difference. That's really good, actually. Yeah, so he's up there. And he was up here for XP. Wow. I think that was also partially due to the fact that Sandbox um, focused a lot um, in their bottom lane advantage there throughout the split, I remember. Um, so let's look at the damage. Middle. Middle. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just mediocre, really. Um, at least he was. Now, do I think LPL 80 carry players are better than LCK ones? I think they're about the same, um, especially the top, like, half of it. Um, like, Ruler and Gumayushi and, like, you know, those guys are elite. And then, like, everybody else, right? Um And then, like, LPC is standing right behind them. So I want to see. That's an interesting one. I think I just don't have an opinion of him for this team yet. Um, like, whether he, like, upgrades or downgrades the team. Um, I think there definitely will be some language issues. He is really the only, only Korean on this team. Usually there's, like, two who can like speak to each other. So I think this is, there's going to be some challenges here. I think unless did he play anywhere like in China before? I don't think he just came through the Korean Academy, right? Like, yeah, like that's going to be an interesting one. I think. Envy joins fairness rejoins May 24th. So like that is really recent, right? Like that's like five days ago. Um, Let me see. That is really recent. So I don't know if they had enough time to mesh. All right, enough of the fluff. fluff. Okay, I don't care. Wonderful chemical reaction. I guess team chemistry, but I doubt it. Like, he doesn't speak Chinese or Mandarin. <laughs> Zeri God, really? All right. Uh, I think it's gonna be fine. I, I, I don't know. I think there will be some language issues. Such as like only five days ago. Like I don't know how he's gonna see like trans. <laughs> All right, let's look at that. If there's anything on the translator. <laughs> like this is how deep we're gonna go to the analysis, right? Since he's the only Korean guy, um, we're just gonna look at the team chemistry. You know? Yeah. All right. I think they're gonna struggle, like in the especially in the bottom lane. Let me see if they're going up against the consistent. 
um IG bottom duo. So let's see. All right, first I'm gonna say LGD. We have NV joining bottom lane by as of five days ago with a new translator. I foresee uh language issues in the bottom lane or right, with AD carry. NV metrics don't impress me as much as a new AD carry should. Um LPC also back up for AD carry. And all right, let's let's look at this. Let's do this. Mid and A to carry sub risk with XQW and LPC. I think uh, high child starting right. Yeah, I think this roster sucks. <laughs> um, I think they'll struggle again. All right, let's look at IGs. Um, maybe I should actually I should look at media how Meteor did um last year, the last split. EGPM IG Gideon. Oh yeah, Gideon used to start. What the oh this is LGD. Okay, sorry. Oh, I think I confused. Alright. Um LGD. LGD. Video right up down here. Um, I mean it's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. Comparatively. All right, let's look at how LGD did as a team. Oh, like mediocre. Okay, that's not too bad. Both under sub 50%. Um, here, jungle control and lane control percentage, which I look at. Um, since we're here already, let's look at Invictus Gamings. Invictus Gamings is down here. Uh, jo lower jungle control, but a higher lane control percentage uh, by a little bit. Um, actually significant on the jungle, 1.5%. Um, but we're going to have different junglers, so that's the issue, right? So we have Meteor versus Tianjin. Um, I don't know much about Tianjin. Yeah, I'll have to go through IG roster changes first. Um, but I just wanted to take a look at this. I think Tianjin might be coming from the academy. Let's let's make let's look at IG's roster real quick, and then we'll go through the match prediction. Um, so crying joined on May twenty third, and Gideon left, um, on May seventh. And Tianjin rejoined from the Academy roster. Okay. Let's see how he did. Um, I think that's critical. But before that, let's look at what the sub risks there are. YSKM, YSKM, and then then he's still here. So let's see. Top. He's the only jungler since Gideon left. Wow. So we're putting a lot of eggs in his basket there. For Tianjin and then mid laners, we have crying and dove. Dove fucking sucked. Like he played top lane, mid lane. Like I don't he's he's bad either way. Um we have mid and then bot AD carry as well. Wow. All right. We have Nanny Dove Xiao Yu G sub risks. All right. Before we go further, I want to look at Tianjin. I think that's going to be an interesting one uh, to look at. I think that may dictate my analysis if it's really bad. So let's see. Players. I want to look at the LDL stats. Let's look at Jungle. HPM. Tianjin. He's right here. IG Young, the academy team. Um... He played 14 games. Okay. 
pretty good. Or was there another jungler for them? Okay, there was. Six games. Interesting. All right, Tianjin was up here. 229. That's pretty good, actually. Um, let's look at this. This is, yeah, that's too recent. Let's look at LDL team. I want to see how well they did. In terms of the jungle control percentage. He's down here. Uh, I mean, that's not that's mediocre. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, does he like to play aggressive champions? Let me, let me see. He's only 18. He played. Okay, Nocturne, Maokai. These are pretty bad stats. He doesn't really like getting a lot of kills. Okay, but good kill participation percentage. These are pretty bad, actually. More of a support utility jungler, it looks like. Um, except for that one. So it looks like it was up and down. Um, it starts right here in last split. He started hot. Like a, probably a bad team. Where? <laughs> okay, it was. Um, utility. All right, let's see if uh, so that kind of requires other uh, other laners on this team to be able to carry, right? So I think he he likes to play more utility jungling champions. Um and if we look at the roster, is is crying. See, uh, crying is not like an assassin player. He he's also more of a utility player. So like these two guys, utility guys, YSKM has shown that he can carry too, but as a top laner, it's really difficult to do that in this meta. And then on and wink is probably what is going to determine my prediction right now. So I want to look at how they did um, last split. On is up here, um, and they're going up against Envy, who I, who I think will struggle. Yeah, this is a toss up. Like, wow, this is an interesting one. On and Wink versus Envy and Jin Zhao. Oh, man. <laughs> Why is Kim Tianjin crying? Yeah, it's a hard one to crack. All right, let's look go through each matchup. All right. So Fearness versus YSKM. Um YSKM had a really good split. Fearness is down here. He's jo joined from FPX, right? Yeah. FPX. Who was there? Xiao Shu or something? Let me see. LGDs. Yeah, Xiao Shu. Was he the only one? Yeah, wow. He was not very good, was he? He was mediocre, actually, up here. EGP and me absorbed Um, Fearness was really bad. What was the other one? Shalau, oh, yeah, he was better. Hmm. Fearness was really bad. That is really bad. Like almost as bad as Rich. Like Rich had one game and they they said fuck it, <laughs> he's off the team. Fearness, fifteen games, still a good sizable sample, and he was pretty bad in terms of EGPM. Although FPX was really bad overall, but he they I mean there were some other worse teams. 
So there is an advantage there. All right, let's look, let's go through that advantage. IG for top. And the jungle, I'll come back to it, I think. Like I said, Tianjin likes to play utility champions and he will, his metrics don't like pop off. And he, but he's the only jungler, right? And then Meteor um, was okay. Uh, maybe I should look at it right now since we're here already. Meteor was right here. Tianjin was kind of like mediocre in the LDL in the academy level. So you think Meteor is going to take advantage of that? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I think it's kind of a, kind of a wash. Like Meteor is a mediocre jungler. <laughs> so let's look at the mid laner. Like I'm not a huge fan of crying either. And Hai Chao was not great either. Oh, this like sucks. Did crying didn't even play? I don't think he played. No, I don't think he played. He was on the team, but he never played. But Hai Chao did, so let's look at that. I mean, he was not bad. I really don't think he was that bad. LGD had another, yeah, XQW, and Hai Chao was better, I remember. Um, I really think Hai Chao. Hold on, I want to see crying. If he actually played last split, I don't think he did. Yeah, look at that. There was a big gap between December and May. He was a free agent. He got signed. I just don't think. I just don't think he's the answer. I think he played a lot of utility. He used to play a lot of utility champions and all that, and I don't think it's the meta at the moment. I mean, I guess it is. You know, just if you put a lot of resources in the, into the AD carry and all that. But I think Hai Chao, I mean, he, I, I really like Hai Chao in this matchup over Crying. So I'll go there um, slightly. Um, and then, like I said, AD carry, Envy was mediocre. An was probably mediocre. I think I looked at already maybe. Let's look at that. He was pretty high up, um, which is good for me to kind of make a determination here. On was pretty high up. Envy was kind of mediocre here in in Korea. Um, that's actually pretty impressive amongst like all the like he was even higher than Jackie Love on EGPM, right? So I think that's impressive. Um, let's look at support. Jinjiao is in there and Wink is in there as well. Um, Jinjiao and Wink. Wink is up here. So IG actually had a really good bottom lane. Um, uh, let's see, maybe crying. Actually, uh, I don't know. If IG is like trying to put a lot of resources into the bottom lane, which looks like if they can, um, looks like On and Wink actually had a really good. Uh, performance last split um so i do feel like tianjin and crying can do this um here tonight um in favor of ig so i think i'm gonna go with ig um ig wins two to zero i like the metrics on IG's AD carry and support to be able to carry with the support of their new jungler and mid laner who favor more supportive utility champions. So I would um, prioritize AD carry support and even maybe top laners. Uh, what's his name? YSKM, yeah, YS on Wink and YSKM in your DFS lineup 
def, uh, LGD definitely E and play for GPP. So that's where I will probably have a bit of share on for LGD, probably favoring Hai Chow with NV also likely having some language issues. So yeah, I think that's where I stand. Um, I guess at the end of the day, I, I that's a long analysis of saying like, I agree with the odds. EDG should win. IG should win. I think GBP plays definitely there. Uh, LGD and NIP as an underdog as underdogs. Um, but I I, I kind of pointed out some some players that I would like to prioritize just based on the lineup advantages, but also their kill shares and kill match uh, kill participation percentages. So yeah, I think I hope this was helpful. Um, I know this was a lo little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be. Um, hope you guys like the video. Um, if you like the video please, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, just follow me at DFS Chan as I post uh, the, the confirmed starters every day. I hope you guys um, interact with me off the off the video, um, any social media at DFS Chan, holler at me, please. And, you know, I hope you guys make some money. Have a good one. Bye-bye.